Good morning, class. We are going to start our subject, theory of computation. But before proceeding further, <coughs> I would like to make clear you two, three points. You just start maintaining two notebooks, one as a class for copy and another as an answer sheet. In that, in that sheet, you just maintain your important formulas. In class, I will tell that I will tell them as important points. Okay, that will be very very useful for you when you are going to revise your subject. Because in, in the last two months you can't revise whole subject in twenty minutes, but you have to do that. So with that use of answer sheets, you will be able to revise your uh, twenty hour subject into twenty minutes. Okay, so. You see, um, what should I say is like um, in TOC, what we are going to see is what I am assuming is you know the basic concepts, but still, I will explain all the basic concepts which have been covered in this certain course. This is DFA, NDFA, PDA. Turing machine. In gate, eighty percent of the questions will be formed from an FA DFA, ten percent from here, ten percent from here, and from all this, fifty percent question will be to solve. Fifty percent question will be for uh, from your theoretical part, which I would going to cover, and you are going to write it down in your answer sheets. Okay. So uh, this must be the part where we will concentrate the most. Questions may be of different kinds, which I will cover in my class. And final important point to be highlighted is like you should note down all the important points. I am going to tell you all that. Okay. So let's start with our subject. T O C. In this, we are going to see automata. Complexity, okay. Complexity will comprises of P and N P, which will be the last portion which I am going to cover. Okay, this is uh, complexity, automata, and one more is computability as well. I got forgotten. Computability. These three things comprises the whole subject. In complexity, we are going to see P and N P problems. Which is also a part of algorithm, so you can refer Corman for that. Or my classes class will be sufficient for this. Automata means all the languages grammars, which we are going to see with use of different models. These two are most important. Computability we are not going to see. The questions will be formulated from the starting two topics, so we will see these two. Okay. Just wait. Okay. What are the important points? Now we are going to start our subject. Now you know. I am assuming that you know all the basic concepts. Some concepts we are going to cover also here. Okay. So to start, you must know some. Uh, there should be some terminologies which should be clear to you. If not, then you can follow. Or if you are clear with that, just go for a brief revision. Okay. Languages. Strings, okay. Grammars, models, or we can call it as machines or automata. Different terminologies are used. <coughs> so in languages, uh, we are mainly going to cover four languages. You already know, I guess, regular language, uh, context-free language. Context sensitive language and what is REL, RL. This is recursive language, recursive enumerable language. There is a minute difference between these two languages. Maximum type of questions, at least you can expect one question from this topic. There is one minute difference and there is a catch. We will see shortly after these three topics. Okay. Regular language, again, we are going to find, they are going to give 80% of questions from this part. And one theoretical question is sure from this, okay? And CSL is not in course. They are not going to ask more uh, more questions in CSL. So point is RL, CFL, and the last one, okay? 
Theoretically, last one is more important, especially the properties of all the languages. Now, these are four languages. Okay, now coming to the topic. Okay, you follow this. You just make the note down of this, what you are going to see in this TOC course. Uh, these are four languages. What are the strings? Shortly, we are going to see what are the strings. Okay, what are strings? Mm, for every machine, suppose this is any of my machine. Okay, I am giving some input to this machine and output to this and there is one output which we are going to catch from this machine whole computer science is based on this scenario you know that now output in automata is accepting or non accepting and input in automata is nothing but some type of language this may be your finite automata this may be your push down automata this may be your turing machine this may be your lba this lba is linear bounded automata okay sorry just a bit okay <coughs> so input is language language is collection of strings so the smallest element here is called as an string suppose my input symbol is 0 1 okay this is the symbol for a string any string which comprises of characters 0 or 1 okay in simple terms so a string may be like 0 1 right single 0 also an string single 1 is also a string it's also an string this is also an string okay so 0 1 may be input to this machine single 0 may be input to this machine series of 1 may be an input to this machine so we will see whether this machine is accepting this input or not so what TOC is TOC is nothing but the study of mathematical representation of computing machines and their capabilities right now the collection of these strings with some restrictions give rise to formal languages okay now these are my two input symbols in this case okay i am writing the remaining portion okay all this i should rub this out okay I think this is over for you. Okay. Continuing to this part. And now we are going to design a language from this string whose input symbol is 0 or 1. Okay. We are restricting this string. We are putting some restrictions on the input symbols. My restrictions would be like because it gives rise to language so we are going to represent the collection of strings as a language and it will be termed as L my language may be 0 to power m okay such that m is even so this language will comprises of how many strings not how many but what type of strings it may be 0 0 is this true? Okay, you think. We will come into shortly. 0, 0, single 0, this one, and so on. Okay. <coughs> Here, m is even. That means this can't be the string which belongs to this language. Similarly, this can't be the string because here m equals to 1, m equals to 3, and these are not even this belongs to this language this belongs to this language and also this string belongs to the same language okay now here we are clear with what are the formal languages actually these are the languages which are input to these machines and these machines are telling what type of language is this and whether they are able to accept or not okay suppose this is whether uh, suppose this is a regular language and if i am uh, giving the regular language as an input to finite automata then definitely it is giving output as an accepting language 
that means this machine is finite state machine okay so these are the strings languages these things are clear to you now third point comes as grammar i will write it down here okay first of all be clear grammar is not the generating device but grammar is a set of some production rules which are going to define some languages okay now suppose such rules are called as production rules okay this s is called as the starting symbol a b will called as non terminals okay now this non terminal stands to some terminal a is called as terminals okay in short we will say this small letter letter numbers alphabets are called as terminals in capital are called as non terminals and only s is called as starting symbol okay from which you are going to format some languages fine Uh, if i will go to like this b then what language this grammar is generating simple uh, to generate this is s a b a b so what is this generating is a b language generated by this grammar is a b so this is called as a grammar okay so we are clear with three things with relating to this subject one is language okay second one is uh, what we have taken what we have taken okay right here models just now we have read grammar okay the whole theory subject lies into the all the three all the three things we will see how first language was regular language please note it down it is most important that means this is the basic from which you are going to start we are going to move on the higher level things from this uh, thing only if you are clear with these things then definitely you will catch the apples very fast first is regular language we will see one by one <coughs> okay the grammar corresponding to this language is called as regular grammar and the model or machine which is going to accept this language we will call it as finite state machines okay or finite automata in terms of pure thing second language comes is cfl context free language the grammar corresponding to these languages are called as context free grammar and the machine which is going to accept this language will be called as pda that is push down automata okay now the third one uh, csl context sensitive language these two are confusing but uh, this we actually uh, this is not in course but definitely you must so know some theoretical concepts of this because they are going to frame the questions from all the four languages in their properties so you have to follow all the four context sensitive language the grammar corresponding to is called as context sensitive grammar model corresponding to these three will be called as Yes, LB, linear bounded automata. Don't worry about this. They are not going to design you. They are not going to ask you to design an LB. They are going to ask you this or this. Okay. Fourth one will be called as recursive language or recursive enumerable language. Enumerable language. Okay. The grammar corresponding to this will be called as. <coughs> Sorry. It's called as recursive grammar. An automata a model which is going to accept this called as Turing machine. This is our present day computers because they are going to accept all types of inputs and giving us some some output. Not only accepting, not accepting, but accepting, not accepting, and also looking. So you have to check it from there. These are called as Turing machines. Okay, but Turing machines generally, uh, uh, practically, they don't exist. But uh, we are studying about it because uh, nowadays computers are called as Turing machines. Okay. 
so these are the basics you must note down this definitely okay now some important things okay again consider this one is you this one you should note down in your note sheet which have this is note this is also should go into both this is one of the important points if input symbols are 0 and 1 0 0 something something like that okay sigma star that means collection of all the strings with input symbol 0 and 1 sorry it should be like this thank you sorry for that and these are the input symbols sigma star means all the collection of strings which are possible with using these all the input symbols like 0, 0, 1, 1 and all that which you can whichever you can design now these are collection of strings what do you think are these countable yes these these collection of strings are countable now if we go one level higher we can write it as collection of this but these are uncountable Okay, these are collection of strings and these are collection of languages. That means this is language, this is a string, this is a string, this is language, and this you should call this collection of languages. Okay, this is countable, this is this is of course countable, this is countable, this is only uncountable. So in TOC, just remember one thing, collection of all the languages are always uncountable and all these are, all these sets are always countable, always countable, okay. This should be going to your note. This is the first thing you must note down, this is the second thing, this is the third thing which I have just spoken, okay. I should rub it down possibly. I am going to fast, I know. But since this is a video lecture, so you can just reverse it and you can note it if you have missed some point. Now one of the important points, I have to rub it from here also. Tom is definitely they are going to frame one question. You must be clear with these things, okay? With the presentation of sets, okay. We have seen languages, four types, grammar are also like four types, recursive grammar, CFG, CSG, and REG and RG, okay. <coughs> so, we will go for, these all are basics, right? If you are not uh, following clearly, then don't worry about it. When we will proceed further, then you will follow all these concepts. One, one concept will be being used from here. Chomsky hierarchy, what this Chomsky hierarchy says? <coughs> recursive grammars, sorry, recursive language are most restricted type of language. Most of the restrictions are in this language. Okay. CFL are just above regular language. Okay. CSG are above this. And all the sets of languages are accepted by Turing machine. Language will be called as recursive grammar. Oh, I'm sorry. These are uh, languages, not grammar, right? So I will. I should write possibly R here. So recursive language, recursive number of language. Okay. Now the same one more diagram corresponding to this will be called as in terms of grammar. This is my recursive grammar. This is my context-free grammar. This is my CSG context sensitive, and this is my recursive grammar or recursive enabled grammar. Okay, now this grammar have one more name. Okay, this grammar have one more name. Now it's type 0 grammar, type 1 grammar, type 2 grammar. Type three grammar. Okay. 
this all should be in your present should be in your note because you have to revise this in the last months i already told you revising whole subject is not possible in half an hour so to revise the subject in half an hour you must be present with your sheets so that you can recall all important points for one important point there should be a uh, there should be a concept of whole one lecture so you can't go through all the lectures again in the last two months so these are very very important points so you must note it down in your notebooks uh, now this is uh, okay what i should tell now okay fine these are most important so from this one thing is clear what you can write it from here t3 is subset of t2 is subset of t1 is subset of t0 most of the questions they are going to form form from here this is the most basic point okay second basic point corresponding to this type 3 corresponds to which grammar which language recursive language recursive language is subset of which language it's subset of t2 grammar that means cfg cf this is csl this is r okay this is again the second important point you should not it down okay means if language l is a regular grammar then definitely it is a recursive modal grammar it is a context sensitive grammar it is context free grammar okay but not all the context free grammar are regular grammar but all the context free grammar are context sensitive grammar it is clear from here okay suppose i should this uh, to be more clear i should give an example suppose l1 is rg l2 is crg l3 is let's say rg i mean no, recursive inverse grammar or recursive grammar this is regular grammar actually okay possibly you know, i should use language here i am wrong i'm sorry if l1 belongs to here if l1 is here then definitely it is in cfg it is in csg it is in rg it is clear from here but if any language is in cf that means if any language is here which one is here l2 then l2 is cfg l2 belongs to this circle l2 is csg l2 is rg but l2 is not rg so this is the basic concept in which you are going to form the questions so you write it down possibly the example also okay <clears throat> okay let me check whether i am going sequential or not okay i am going correctly okay language model this is my regular language this is my context free language this is my context sensitive language and above all this there will be recursive language and recursive enumerable enumerable language okay now we are going to relate all all the three things into one diagram the grammar corresponding to this regular language will be called as regular grammar okay similarly grammar corresponding to cfl will be called as context free grammar grammar corresponding to csl is called as context sensitive grammar grammar corresponding to this will be called as recursive grammar or recursive enumerable grammar right okay we are able to formulate these two things into one diagram now <clears throat> which machines are going to accept all these languages actually regular language is accepted by which machine 
finite automata CFL is going to be accepted by push down automata CSL is going uh, LBA linear bounded automata this is the will be accepted by Turing machine this is our nowadays computers so remember this diagram okay now um, in machines we have to move from state to state the next move depends upon my present input okay so that move be deterministic or non-deterministic so it is deterministic when it is deterministic if we know that from state one there is possible only one move to state two on that input symbol suppose input symbol is one so from s1 there is only one possible move for every each and every step this is true this condition is true then this type of machine will be called as deterministic by deterministic that is you know what you have to do if you get an input symbol if you get a character from your input symbol okay you know if you get one you have to move to state two you know if you have to if you are getting zero then you have to remain in state one suppose again here one is more move like zero so in zero you have possible two moves you can move to s1 you can move to s2 so you it is not deterministic type so if this is present then the machine is called as non-deterministic okay so model are two two types deterministic and non-deterministic okay so there is no point of confusion model are four types but they may be deterministic and non-deterministic that means move may be deterministic or non-deterministic here we will going to see okay we will call as this FAS deterministic finite automata or NDFA okay PDA similarly will be called as deterministic PDA or non-deterministic PDA Oh no, I am not going to explain all this. This is common sense. It may be deterministic, it may be not deterministic. Okay. Or already you have gone through this course in your graduations. So I am not going to deep into that. We are we will definitely go into the we will proceed further as soon as possible into questions. Okay. Now mm, yes, one more point. One more question may be framed from so there must be you must be raising questions in each and every point right in your mind you should frame some more questions it will more clearly for you so one question arises whether the power of df and ndf are same what do you think you just keep in your mind because i can't contact you now okay oh in pda uh, whether the power of dpd and npd is same okay what about tm it is also deterministic DTM. It is also NDTM. We are not going to details into this. This discussion about this should be ended here only. Later on, we will go into the properties of CSL. It is context sensitive means those are more important for you. Okay. Now. Okay. So uh, make a note of expressive powers. Means we are going to see the power of models whether they are equal or if not then which is more more powerful which is less powerful okay okay so first point power of dfa is always equal to power of ndfa if a language is being accepted by dfa then definitely the same language will be accepted by ndfa there is no point of confusion here Third, power of NDPDA is always greater than power of PDA. Why this is greater? We will see when we will come across this language. That is context-free language. Okay. Second, oh sorry, third, power of deterministic Turing machines is equal to power of the Turing machines. That means uh, non-deterministic Turing machines, obviously. Okay, why? This is clear, this is clear. 
why this one we are going to ask question this why this is so so we will cover this in the next topic next class possibly if we we will be able to cover this in the other classes now what else okay so you make a note of this <coughs> i will put adding here this is Okay. Hmm. Whenever we are going to Whenever for the same thing, if there are two or five, two or more approaches, then definitely the comparison is very important. We are going to frame uh, not only on this subject. If you can arrive for the same thing, different models, and every day you must see which model is good, which one means pros and cons of each and every model. Why model five is better than model two? So again, we have to again we are going to see this drawbacks of FA. I will rub it down. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, what we are going to see? What am I up to? Okay, yes, I got it. Drawbacks of F. Okay. First and most important drawback is less memory. FA finite automata, finite state machines have zero MB of memory, zero bytes of memory. I say. Okay, you know the thing PDA uses one stack. That means some memory is allocated to stack uh, to push down automata. So this is more powerful than finite state machines. Okay, we will see why shortly. The other two drawbacks are based on the same because it is having less memory. Uh, it accepts. Oh, uh, I should write. It doesn't accept. All type of languages. Okay. So this is related to this only. For why? Why it doesn't accept? Because it is very very less memory. Okay. So these are the two important drawbacks. One more you can say because of limitation of memory, it is not accepting all type of languages. The other one is it can store only small amount of uh, information because it has very very less memory. So what is it, uh, depending upon the first one? So this ends of our introduction classes. Uh, till now, what we are seeing is. What you are going to see in the further classes of this TOC. So, if you have any doubts, definitely you must have. I will appreciate. Okay. If you want to contact me, if you want to have any doubts, if you want to clear doubts. Okay. I must write it down. At least this one clear, more clearly to you. This one is my first ID. Okay, you can mail your doubts into these two. One of the two IDs, possibly this one, because I am frequent checker of this ID. Then also you can get uh, you can get some interesting questions or interesting suggestions. Especially on gate because I have uploaded all the uh, cut-offs, cut-offs of the last 
last admission procedures of all the IITs and possibly good educations. If you want any guidance from uh, sort of colleges or some sort of questions, so you can log on to this and put your comments and definitely you can mail your questions to these two things. Okay. I can read it out. Halve.pratik at gmail.com. H -E L W E. Second one is H dot Pratik, that is P R A T W K. And third one is Pratik Halve dot Broadspot.com. You can make a Google search for it. So this ends our first introduction lecture. Thank you.